My dearly beloved in Christ, not having much of a voice this morning, I will have a shorter sermon on a very important topic that comes to mind when we think of the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity, and that is the virtue of faith. Because how can there be three persons in one God? We don't know how that can be, but we know that it is. And we know that it is because we have the faith. What a gift from God is the gift of faith. Faith means that you accept as true, you intellectually assent to something as being true that someone else has told you. So every day we practice human faith when we are told that something happened or something took place and we, we, didn't, we weren't there to witness it, but we believe it on the testimony of the person telling us. So that's human faith. But divine faith, supernatural faith, means we accept as true what God has revealed, what his holy church teaches. As we read in the Athanasian Creed, if anyone wishes to be saved, Above all, it is necessary that he hold the Catholic faith. What a gift, again, we have from God that we have been given the true faith. We read in the collect of today's Mass, Almighty and everlasting God who has granted to thy servants in confessing the true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of majesty to adore the unity. We beseech thee that by steadfastness in the same faith we may ever be defended against all adversity. That is important prayer, to pray that we may be steadfast in the faith, that we may persevere to our dying breath in the true faith. Now again, faith is a virtue by which we intellectually assent to something being true that God has revealed. And it's very important for us that we not look upon faith as just some kind of a feeling. In fact, Pope St. Pius X condemned as a teaching of modernism that faith is some kind of internal feeling. Let me read to you a short section from the Oath Against Modernism of Pope Pius X. I hold as most certain And I profess sincerely that faith is not a blind religious feeling issuing forth from the secret places of subconsciousness, but a genuine ascent of intellect to truth received from without through hearing. St. Paul says to the Romans, faith comes by hearing. In other words, the faith is preached to us and we accept it and we assent. So faith comes from without in that sense. The Council of Trent declared that there is no justification without faith. In other words, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And this is what St. Paul says in his epistle to the Hebrews. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that seek him. Let us appreciate and treasure the gift of faith, and let us also be very careful never to endanger our faith, which one might do by questioning, by entertaining a doubt against faith, by reading material that attacks the faith, or listening to Protestant preachers, etc., who don't hold the faith, we have to be very careful that we avoid any dangers to our faith. We sometimes wonder, how can it be that someone who is raised in the faith, who was given the faith, who held it at one time, loses the faith? And that can happen, first of all, by not practicing the faith by not exercising the virtue of faith. 
And we do that every time we make an act of faith and we accept as true, we assent again to what our faith teaches us. But also by practicing the faith, meaning receiving the sacraments, living a prayer life, performing the various uh, duties that our faith requires of us. And what can happen, sadly, is that someone begins to drift away from the faith. He or she, first of all, begins to neglect prayer. And then maybe not to go to Mass on a Sunday. And then maybe that goes on and it becomes habitual. And the person becomes weaker and weaker in faith. And eventually it could happen that the, fir- the person loses his or her faith completely. What a terrible tragedy to lose the gift of faith. But that can happen by one who fails to appreciate it and fails to live it. Our faith must not be a dead faith, but a living faith, which means we exercise it, we practice it. We live a prayer life, we go to Mass, we worship God, and we appreciate the faith. Let us always treasure this gift of faith that we received at baptism and especially to live it, to practice it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.